Good morning and happy Tuesday. I'm your host, Christopher, and today we're starting a new series called Tech Tuesdays, where we look at, install, and review tech. So today, we're going to be installing this WD Blue 2 terabyte hard drive. What we're going to need for this is a screwdriver, a SATA cable, and a pair of gloves. All right then, let's dive in. Okay, before we go anywhere, we're going to need to go to our start menu, hit power, and we're going to hit shut down. And we're just going to wait for everything to power down here. And then we're going to pull our case out to give ourselves more access to the power and the back panel. Next, we're going to turn off the power and unplug the case. Then you're going to want to remove any peripherals that may get into your way. And we'll take off that back panel and give ourselves some access. And look at that cable management. Lovely. But there's the cage. Now that we see that we have plenty of access to it, let's stop unboxing our case and unbox our electronics. So here we have our SATA cable. And it looks pretty decent. Two feet should be enough for us to be able to reach from our hard drive to the motherboard. And speaking of that hard drive, we'll unbox that. And at this point we can see that it's put into an electrostatic bag. And that's part of the reason why I included gloves. Now, do I think they're necessary? No, not really. But it's better to be safe than sorry. And then we're going to reach in and start undoing the cage. Now for mine, it has a built-in screw, so we're just going to unscrew that. And we're going to end up um, moving it around a little bit. Because it has tabs at the bottom. Now not every case is going to be like this, but this is just how mine is. So we're going to unseat it from the tabs, and we're going to pull out our cage. As you can see, it's pretty standard double cage, and <laughs> it's pretty darn dusty, but really simple, just slide in our hard drive, and we're ready to mount it. Now mounting, it's pretty easy. We're just going to use the four provided screws that they gave us, and you don't have to put them in very tight, just screw them down snug. It's not going to really go anywhere. And then once you're done, all it is is just putting it back in, aligning those tabs, and screwing the thing back down. Perfect. All tight. And now we're going to grab one of our cables for power and plug it in on that left hand side. So found one cable that already had something plugged into it and we're going to remove that and move it up along the power cable so that we have enough length with this cable to reach down to our hard drive. So we're going to move around our cables to get access and oh maybe not it is not facing the right way so unfortunately because of that we're gonna have to take it out now we can flip around the power cable but the problem is is that flipped around it's actually hitting the bottom of the cage and the bottom of the case which is kind of annoying I really wish NZXT would have pushed the cage up a little bit more, but it is what it is. So what we're going to do is remove the screws, 
pull it out. And I originally thought that we could just flip it upside down and yay, we're all set, right? Oh. Well, those screw holes don't line up. Awesome. So that's not going to work. Well, kind of frustrated, I set it down and <laughs> took a quick break. But from there I realized, oh, we can just move it up one more slot in the cage and that'll give us enough room for our power cable. So, we'll move the power cable around here, get it plugged in properly, and have plenty of room for that cable to wrap around with the wires. Next, we're going to move our case around to the front and open it up so that we have access to our uh, SATA cable plug-in on the motherboard. And we'll just plug it into any one of those slots with a little bit of effort. It's in. And then finally, our last cable. Again, we'll muscle it around all the other cables and get it plugged in right next to our power cable. Now you can use either end of the SATA cable on either side, but I found that using the straight end on the motherboard was easier than trying to make the right angle end work. So we'll plug that in and then we'll start rerouting. And this is really important as you can tell because the more mess that you have back here, the harder it is the next time you come back in and install something. But yeah, by this point, it's just tidying everything up. And then you put back your panels. We will reinstall our peripherals, plug the power back in, and turn the computer back on. All right, now that we've installed the disk physically, Let's do it virtually. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check and make sure that we actually have a disk. So we're going to go to Properties and Device Manager and Disk Drives. Now there are multiple ways of getting to our Device Manager. We could do Windows R key and Disk Management MSC, which is right down here spelled out or we can just type it into our search bar. And as you can see, we do have our drive here, but it's not installed yet. So usually what I end up doing is just typing in format into oop, format. And we're gonna go to our control panel and it'll pop up our disk management and it's wanting to initialize the disk. Now for me, I got to this point but I didn't have a disk to initialize. And it was actually doing a disk zero and a disk three. So it was at that point I'm like, okay, something's not right. Cause I didn't even have our disk zero. Didn't have black bar, nothing. It was just zero with no information. And scrolling down, there was a three with no information. So at that point, we're troubleshooting. And the first thing to troubleshoot is the disk itself. So let's go back to our device manager. And we'll go to disk drives, our device, and we'll choose an action of updating the driver just to see if that's an issue. And we hit update and it says we're already good. Best drivers we can have, perfect. So we'll close that out. Bring that back down. Next thing is to simply refresh or rescan our disks, make sure that they're actually there. Now, if you refresh or rescan and you get the same thing of nothing here, then we move on to the next thing. And the next thing for us is we're going to go into our settings, we're going to go to our system and we're going to go to storage. Now what we're looking for is manage storage spaces because it's possible that our storage has been linked together virtually with something else. So we're going to go to create a new pool in storage space. 
we're going to hit yes and we're going to see what it comes up with now it's either going to give you a couple of options one it will select a drive and so as you can tell we're seeing our drive right now or the first time i tried this it's going to say there are no drives and it didn't give me any pools and both of those options are a plus if we're seeing both of those great but if we're seeing them in a pool we're going to have to disentangle them from the pool so now that everything looks great on this end our next step now that we've messed around with it in terms of refreshing and trying to reformat all that stuff is we're actually going to physically go back disconnect it and reconnect it so we'd be disconnecting both power and um, our plug into the motherboard now you can do this while the computer is running not the power you can disconnect just your plug into your USB um, but generally I like to shut down the computer unplug it replug it back in and then turn the computer back on and that is what ended up working for me so now I can see my desk if that still didn't work for you by this point you're probably gonna have to go into BIOS and make sure that where you've plugged into the motherboard actually has a port that's running because some of those ports on bio on the motherboard will actually be shut off if not in use by the BIOS so you may have to go in there and take a look now if that is still not helping you then by that point you may want to look at the drive but now that we've gotten to this point we could either close this out and go back to disk management and go from here or we can right click on our disk and we can hit initialize disk now we can either choose master reboot or GPT it's automatically choosing GPT and I don't need it to go back farther simply because I am only using Windows 10 and up at this point but if you're using uh, Windows 10 back through to Windows 7 or earlier you are going to need to do MBR so let's hit OK and it's going to initialize and this is also something where I've had this work and I've had it fail the first time I did this it actually blue screened my computer so if you have that issue don't worry just restart come back do it again all right and should be set okay and then now that everything's set it's initialized essentially we're going to do new simple volume we'll get to our setup wizard click next yep and assign the following drive letter you have a billion of them pick anyone you care for and then do we want to mount it all that junk so I haven't tried our drive path mm, it's completely up to you if you want to great if not I'm just gonna do a drive letter and then filing system so we have XFAT or NTFS if you are only using this for Windows NTFS if you're going to use it for both Windows and Mac XFAT so it's only going to be for Windows we're going to do our default volume label new volume we can change this to anything I'm just going to remove it and say 
archive and perform quick formats and then we're going to hit next and it'll show you all the settings you just did looks great we're going to hit finish and it's going to format the drive and perfect it says healthy we are all set up and over here on our PC now we have our new archived disk so now you are officially installed okay so a quick wrap up and review in the end I like it it works exactly for my needs in terms of being archival and just storing a ton of files it does a great job if you're looking for something with more speed I would recommend going up to a SATA or NVMe but yeah in terms of like overall transfer speed it did pretty decently and actually is rated um, relatively low on Best Buy's website they rated it as a 5400 RPM drive it's actually a 7200 I was doing a little bit of research online and turns out I think Best Buy's uh, information is wrong on their website which is kind of a surprise but you know you never know and luckily this one actually swung in a way that was positive instead of negative so if you're getting this it's actually a 7200 RPM drive and then in terms of transfer speeds uh, realistically I put a folder of about 45 gigs worth of videos from my NVMe to this hard drive and it took almost four minutes so the transfer was about 187 megabytes which is higher than what Best Buy rates it and lower than what um, it says online on WD's website pretty decent sounds about right to me personally like if you're using moving pictures for example it is way faster but if you're moving really heavy files it runs into that area about mm, 10 seconds into the transfer so just keep that in mind but overall I like it I would definitely use this again so thanks for watching and I hope you have a good day. Bye.